over lunch again. Mmm. <laughs> huh. Man, it's hot in here. I have a bunch of rotisserie chicken in here. Peppers and cauliflower, that's it. I always get hiccup. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> that was a tough one. I always get hiccups when I don't feel like I'm eating that quickly. Just ate some, so now I can talk for a bit before I need to finish. So this weekend, something different is happening. Uh, on Saturday, Shane is gonna be dropping off Aegon here at my house, so I will be watching him for the entire day, including overnight to Sunday. We haven't really figured out when on Sunday he's gonna pick him up yet, but I would imagine afternoon or shortly, a few hours after I wake up or something. And I originally came up with this idea last week. All right, here it goes. So he got Aegon a couple months ago, right? And he tends to travel a fair amount for work. I wouldn't say crazy amounts, but maybe every other month or maybe a certain period throughout the year, he does travel a bit more than usual. So maybe like a couple days a month, maybe a week or two a month. But during the few times that he has traveled so far, I have not been watching Aegon. And the main reason I haven't been doing it is because it's just a lot of responsibility and I, I really value my time a lot. So if I were to watch him, I feel like it would really change my entire routine because now I have to account for another dog. I don't necessarily know how he behaves, specifically with me because I have never just been around Aegon alone without Shane. I feel like if Shane is there and I am there, it will still be different than how he would act if it was just me. So I am mainly concerned about his crate behavior. I don't think he's as calm as he should be. And I have to go to work. So if I ever need to watch him over the weekday, I would be very concerned that the eight hours that he's in the crate at my house, he will spend it barking the entire time. And I wouldn't be very happy about that, especially because Riley would be around that and my cats. So I wouldn't be pleased with that. And since I have to work, I can actually be around to correct it. I'm not even sure if my manager would allow me to work from home the few days that I did watch him, but I just don't feel like that's much of an option. So that would be one of my concerns. Another concern is just that he probably barks a lot overnight. And that is obviously frustrating because I wouldn't be able to get good sleep if he's constantly barking. I would have to try to get him to calm down. And I just don't know what his behavior is gonna be like. It's just a big mystery. So a lot of those unknowns and me feeling like it's just a huge undertaking, I would feel kind of like I would have to train him during the time he's here. So because of that, I just haven't really opted to watch him yet. But at the same time, I guess I do feel bad that I'm not helping out because he has helped me out quite a bit in the past and it's not necessarily that I don't want to return the favor, it's just that it's a lot of responsibility and it does change my life a lot. So I feel like he travels semi-frequently enough that if Aegon is hard to handle while he's here, then it would be very tough for me to be willing to watch him all the time. So this weekend is going to be like a trial, which is why it's only one day and then one night because I just want to see how he'll be like. He might surprise me. I am actually, the more I think about it, I feel like he might actually be a pleasant surprise because the few times in the past when I went to Shane's house to help him with some training, Aegon did end up doing what we wanted after a few corrections. I think a big problem that he's having is that Aegon's hair is full grown, right? I shave Riley down so the contact point touches her neck directly so that my corrections are always going to be felt as they should. But for him, I don't think Aegon's really feeling them properly. There's too much hair, so it's very difficult. So whenever he gives a correction, it's just very random what kind of response he's gonna get. And you need that consistency for the training to actually matter or to 
have consistent behavior results from your dog. So that's an issue that he's having that I'm not necessarily sure I can address this weekend because in the past when we've tried to shave him, he struggles a lot. So it's kind of dangerous to shave when they're freaking out like that. So I'm not sure if he will freak out just as badly when he's alone here with me, hopefully not. But if he does, then I won't shave him and we'll see if we can get the e-collar to be fitted as best as we can. I'm not necessarily sure what I'm gonna be working with him on while he's here. I have like two different sides where one side I'm like, ooh, let me see how much I can train him in a day when he's here. But I don't really think that's necessary because I think the most important things that I would want to make sure that he's doing is the threshold structure stuff. So at the door, I feel like he's pretty decent at the door from what I've heard, but I wanna make sure that he never runs out. And then I might actually try seeing if he whines or barks if I leave the house while he's crated in there during the day because I feel like he would and maybe I could see if I could get him to be calm. I wouldn't actually leave the house. I would just go outside the front door and I'll set up this camera in front of his crate and then I'll see what his actions are like. So maybe if I hear him barking from outside, I can correct him and we'll see if his behavior changes. But there's just a lot of stuff to possibly work on, especially because I feel like his level of structure is slightly more lenient than mine. So I did tell Shane beforehand for this weekend that I would be way more strict about a lot of things. And as long as he's okay with that, then I'm okay with that. And he says he is because there have been a few things I've noticed that I feel like Shane could definitely be way more firm about that he hasn't been. And I feel like if you kind of clean up a few of those things, then it will really make a difference. I'm not actually sure though if I'll be able to watch him even though we do try this out. I think it's just a good start because I think it's also very good to expose him to an environment first. So even if I don't end up watching him anytime soon, if I do end up watching him and he has been here a few times, then it would be a more smooth dog sitting than if he just comes here for the first time and he has to stay here for like five to seven days or something. It's just a bit of a tough dilemma. I feel like whenever I talked about this with people where I wasn't really sure if I wanted to watch him, I feel like people just automatically view it as, oh wow, you don't want to help out your friend. You're selfish and that's such a bad thing to do. But I feel like my argument is really reasonable where Watching a dog is a lot of responsibility, right? It's a lot of added responsibility. And it's kind of 24 seven, basically. I have to make sure he's behaving himself the entire time he's here. So even if he's on place or something, I will have to kind of make sure he's following through on it because I don't know him well enough to know what to expect. With Riley, I don't have to stare at her all the time. I just know she'll do it. And I know I don't really have to correct her, but with him, it's gonna feel different. So. My routine is gonna completely change, even if slightly with him here, and my lifestyle will change a little bit. I feel like people don't entirely realize how much you have to do when you're watching a dog. They just kind of view it as, oh, you don't want to help out when you have the ability to. You are a terrible person, but I, I think it's reasonable to not want added stuff that could affect your free time and how you live your life, even if temporarily. So those were my concerns beforehand. And I also have to work, right? Like I said, I have to go to work. So if he's here during the day in the crate and barking the whole time, I'm disturbing my neighbors and I would feel so awful for my own pets. So there's so many things to consider aside from me being able to just take him in and helping out a friend. It does also feel a little bit extra bad too to not help out because the person that's watching his dog often right now doesn't really enforce anything. So whenever he comes back, his dog regresses on training or he does additional new bad behaviors. So if I were to watch him, I would be like really fucking strict, right? So he wouldn't do anything different. He wouldn't learn anything new that's bad. I would hope that would be kind of difficult. I feel like when you're under more structure, and I think that would obviously be more preferred for him to leave his dog with someone that basically 
does all of the structure with his dog. That was a long ramble about this whole situation, but I've just had thoughts about this from time to time. Sometime recently I was talking to someone that kind of made me feel like I was being a bad friend by not helping out. I feel like it's so much more complicated than that and I don't feel like dog people that know the training will understand how much extra work just watching one extra dog is. So yeah, this weekend I'm pretty eager to see how it turns out. Um, I do feel a little bit intimidated about it because it will be tough. I'm hoping that in the very beginning for like an hour or two it will be a little bit complicated but then I hope it will just ease itself because at least for her I do anticipate having to correct her for a little bit of whining. She tends to whine a little bit if we're around people or other dogs and I put her under a command so Last time I went to Shane's house, I put her in a down and I had her head down immediately when we went into the house because I didn't want her to, you know how when dogs first enter a home, they are super excited, right? So I wanted her to be in a down to kind of chill out a little bit before I, they started engaging with each other. So she was in her down, but she was whining from time to time. So I did correct her for that for a few times. So if he comes here, I will anticipate her doing that because I can think about certain situations where I want her in the crate and I want him out just so I could just train him a little bit or just do some structure with him a little bit without distractions because if she's out and I'm trying to give him commands, it'll get confusing, right? She's gonna think I'm talking to her and I don't really want her to go through that as little as possible. So. Oh, dog stuff is complicated, <laughs> but that's what's happening on Saturday, and yeah, I have a mix of intimidation, but I, I'm i really curious to see, you know, how he will end up like after a day with me, so we'll see if I'm a dog whisperer after all, I guess. Hi, it's Thursday evening. My mentality when it comes to watching movies in theaters lately for many months now has been I don't want to go at all because a couple months ago I definitely went through a phase where I went to the movies just because I wanted somewhere to go and somewhere to dress up I kind of had that phase where like it felt nice for me to dress up to go to the movies and then maybe get a meal afterwards like that was my thing and then I would come back I usually don't have anywhere to go if I want to go out and do something because I don't know, just like a lot of things that you normally go out for, I don't feel like it interests me or it doesn't feel worthwhile. So all I really have is nature, Del Mar, or the movies. I am just kind of surprised that I have interest in going to the theaters because I just don't have the most confidence in what Hollywood puts out anymore, unless it's an independent film, which most likely will not be in theaters or it won't easily be accessible. Yeah, I just haven't been paying attention to what movies are coming out lately, so I don't have any idea if there's one I really want to watch, but I do tend to follow YouTube channels like Jimmy Kimmel, um, James Corden, Stephen Colbert, Coco, yes, Coco. <laughs> so I like watching celebrity interviews for the actors and actresses I like, so when I see them in my feed, I do become aware of what movies are coming out. Venom is coming out recently, and that is along the superhero realm that I really dislike, but the thing is, this movie has a lot of actors that I like, and I feel like just because of that, I would really be interested in watching it because I really enjoy their work. So Riz Ahmed, Michelle Williams, and Tom Hardy are the three that I'm mainly interested in seeing. I really like Riz because he was in The Night Of, which was a mini-series on HBO and I thought he did an amazing job. And I actually first saw him in The Reluctant Fundamentalist, which I actually really liked. It was a couple years ago that I saw it, but I think after I saw that movie, he just kind of really stuck with me as an actor I really wanted to focus on. So from that point on, I have watched several of his films and I think he's a great actor. So. I like him. And Michelle Williams is amazing as well. So she did Manchester by the Sea with Casey Affleck. 
man, bug sounds. I always notice that the bug sounds manage to get into my video and that's so annoying. So sorry if that's annoying. <laughs> so I think I'll try to do that this weekend. Also something that I saw today was that Blizzard is offering the WoW Classic demo for anybody that buys the virtual ticket. At first when I read that headline, I was thinking I'm absolutely going to get the virtual ticket to try this out because even though I have very little faith in Blizzard as a company, Classic just does make me interested. I do have fond memories of Classic, so I feel like that does tend to trump my hate for Blizzard. I didn't realize that the virtual ticket is $50, which is crazy. I cannot believe they made it so expensive or they probably did every year. I mean, they rip you off for everything. Race change, faction change. Another thing also is that it's only available from November 2nd to November 8th. They're basically trying to get people that really want to try out Classic to buy the ticket who normally wouldn't because BlizzCon, I have zero interest in BlizzCon. I don't care about their games. I don't care about their esports because their esports to me isn't real esports. If their game is not challenging enough, I would never want to watch it competitively. So they try to force it. I feel like, like they have to themselves set up these tournaments. Otherwise, I doubt other people would really want to do it themselves. Anyways, back to the main point. <laughs> um, I was just really surprised that they have more announcements about WoW Classic because I think I mentioned previously that I just figured it would take them way longer to actually get us a playable version. The fact that they announced it, I guess, is a good thing, but it's really, it's just really hard for me to know what to expect from them at this point. So I think when I read it, it said that you can quest in limited zones and stuff. I just have so much curiosity as to how they are going to do it nowadays, like what, what specific aspects they are trying to recreate or if they are basically just trying to literally revert it back to the way it was. I guess another concern that I would have is that when they release something like this, they better not listen to people whining about stupid things. Like so in the past, questing was so much more different than it is now because you don't have anything guiding you to where you need to go and what you need to do. You had to read quest text or you would have to try to search online to see if somebody talked about a specific quest and what they did for it. Like there were just less resources that you could use and stuff like that, aspects like that forces people to solve these problems for themselves, right? Now, when you're questing, everything guides you. Everything shows you what you need to do. You don't ever have to do anything for yourself. So even small aspects like that, I feel like if people bitch about it, if people bitch about their game now, they always cater to them. So. I just feel like they would do the same mistake where they cater to anyone that's like, oh, this is too hard. Please make this easier for me. And if they do that, then WoW Classic is not WoW Classic anymore. If I were to ever give them money again, I would want it to be for a very good reason and for me to actually feel very good about it based on what I'm getting back from the product I'm buying. So a six day demo for $50 is crazy. I'm not going to pay that. Blizzard is definitely one of those companies that whenever I see something negative about them, I'm like, yes. And it's kind of similar to Riot Games too, because I didn't realize that Riot a couple weeks ago, or maybe it's months ago by now, they were going through all that period where there was a lot of bad press about their awful work conditions, where a lot of their male workers were extremely inappropriate, sexual harassment maybe, or just saying very inappropriate things, even their CEO or the founders and all of that. So when I read that and heard about how awful it is to work with them, it made me happy because I don't like League. And to be honest, I am definitely biased, right? Because I love Dota and Dota is like, they're like competitors with each other. Done chit chatting. Um, last night I started watching Brave because I wanted to watch something I've seen and that I can enjoy before sleeping. Brave is one of the last animated movies that I would consider very, very good, which is kind of sad because it came out in 2012 and it's been so long since I had that feeling of, oh, hey, they're making an animated movie. This is probably going to be really good. Brave surprised me because I didn't know anything about the plot and I was like some girl with a bow on the front cover. She likes archery. I didn't know anything about it, but 
I thought that the mother-daughter connection and growth that they showed during the movie that was very touching to me. So found it very surprising that I liked the movie a lot. But yeah, basically, I just miss expecting good things from animated movies and ah, uh, so many things can be so disappointing. But yeah, I'm gonna finish this movie. So everybody, have a great night.